In this video, I'm going to describe capacity analysis of a process um, shown in this picture. Um, it's a fairly simple process, um, but the analysis is involved in a way that not all the patients go through the same procedures. So it's a medical process. We have um, patients um, going through to a, a physician or a medical clinic where they get a screening interview first, and the screening interview lasts 60 minutes to see whether or not procedure, for example, bariatric surgery, is appropriate to a patient. Now, this, of course, is a simplification. Then 80% uh, of the patients the treatment is not appropriate for, 20% of the patients the treatment is appropriate for, and then the pa uh, these patients, this 20% of everybody who arrives, um, have the procedure done, and that takes 180 minutes. And then of the patients who have the procedure done, 90% do not um, experience any complications, but 10% do experience complications. And for those patients, there has to be an additional procedure done that takes 300 minutes. And um, then, uh, then the patient, these patients who have complications are completed. So there are patients that go through this path, they just have a screening interview, then there are patients who have the screening interview and a procedure, and then there are patients who have the screening interview, the procedure, and the correction. And in the first example, we will um, look at one resource, and say doctor, solo practitioner, doing all three steps. And we want to determine what is the maximum capacity of this process in terms of the number of patients arriving to the clinic. What is the maximum number of patients that the process can handle, assuming the physician is working at full capacity, no breaks, we'll look at the physician working 40 hours a week, and assuming he, um, he is busy every minute of the time, what would be the average capacity? We will make one more assumption that um, the physician is only get paid for the procedure part, so this work is not reimbursed, this work, the corrections are not reimbursed, only the procedures are reimbursed. So we will, uh, so that will be, uh, we will be analyzing this process. Now that I described the process, I have an Excel data spreadsheet set up with some initial data. So I have here the percentage of patients for whom the treatment is appropriate, that's 20%, so that's this number right here. Uh, percentage who need correction after initial treatment, that's 10%. This is this number right here. Um, I'm, in my problem, I'm assuming only um, the only payment is for this procedure, so I have that right here, and that's going to be $1,000. I will assume that I have only one resource, Dr. Solo. I have one of these resources, not two doctors, but I have just one doctor, and I will assume the doctor is willing to work 40 hours a week. So, um, so here is my data. Now I'm setting it up here in slightly different format. Um, so these are my three t tasks, screening interview, initial treatment, correction treatment. The revenues are here. So there's only $1,000. I'm just reading it from there. The revenue, um, the duration is 60 minutes, 180 minutes, 300 minutes. And I need one unit of resource, one unit of my resource for each one of these tasks. Um, so now I want to make some additions. I um, have the number of hours that the doctor is available here in hours, um, and the duration of the tasks here is in minutes, so I'm going to um, translate it to hours. So I'll just take this and divide it by 60. And I'm going, so that's going to be in hours. And I'm just dragging down the formula. Okay, and um, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to um, assume, because just to make the calculations easier, that let's say I have 100 patients going through the first step. So let me just, this is just an assumption that will make some of the calculations easier. So then what is the number of patients that will get initial treatment out of, out of 100? 100 times this percent here, and then 
what is the number that will need correction treatment? It's the ones that went through the initial treatment times this percent here. So now I have the data set up, and what I want to figure out is what is my cap weekly capacity, maximum capacity, if I assume my Dr. Solo is working without any break, how many patients can he handle coming into his practice or her practice? So here I said, let's say it's 100 patients. So how many hours would it take to handle 100 patients? Well, out of 100 patients, 80, pa 80 would just go through this step so they will take one hour each, so I will have 80 hours for these 80 patients. Um, and the next one, there will be um, 20 patients that will go on to get the initial procedure. And so they will get this plus this. There will be 20 patients um, that will get that. So they have an hour here and three hours here. So that's 20 times 4. So that's another 80. Plus, there will be, out of those 20, there will be two patients that will have to go through the correction procedure. So that's five more hours, 2 times 5. Um, so that's 18, 18, and 10. So if I sum it together, then I get. 170. So if I had 100 patients come in, um, then I would need 170 hours. Now, I only have 40 hours available. So if I have only 40 hours available, so that's 40 divided by 170, so I only have this fraction of the time available um, to handle the patients during the week, so that's this times 100. So I will only be able to handle 23.52 patients. Let me show you how I've set it up in the spreadsheet below the same calculation. Let me just move this down. So total time spent um, in the clinic, I have 170. You see I have 170. And the way I calculated it, that this here using a sum product, the way the sum product works, it takes uh, multiple arrays. It multiplies all the elements of the array that are in the same position and then sums up these products together. So it's 100 times 1 times 1, plus 20 times 3 times 1, plus 2 times 5 times 1. So I'm also getting 170. The next thing that I did here, so it's basically the same calculations I did here but in different order, is that I divided 170, the total number of hours that I needed, by the number of patients that came for the screening interview, so and I got 1.7 hours per patient. So n that's an average, so no real patient received that much time, but on average per arriving patient, I'm spending 1.7 hours. So um, again, as we said before, I'm spending just an hour on patients that don't, that only get the screening interview and don't get the procedure. I'm spending four hours um, on patients that get the screening interview and the initial procedure, and I'm spending nine hours on the patients that need correction after the initial procedure. So I spent either one hour, four hours, or nine hours per patient. But on average, per patient that arrives to the clinic in, for the initial interview, I'm spending 1.7 hours. So then if I have 40 hours available, so that's 40 hours per week per resource times one resource, and I need 1.7 hours per arriving patient, then I can handle the number of hours that I have available divided by the average number of hours per patient, 23.53 patients per week. And now if I'm interested uh, what amount of money that would bring me, what is my revenue per week if I'm working at full capacity, then I, the w one of the ways I could calculate this, I could say, well, if I had 100 patients, what would be my revenue? Well, I wouldn't get anything. So that's 100 times 0 plus 20 times 1,000 plus 2 times 0. So that's 20,000. But that's if I had 100 patients. But at full capacity during the week, I only have that many. 
So what do I have? It will be this number times this times what fraction of the patients I'm handling. So this divided by that. So it's G25, $20,000 times the number of patients that I'm able to handle per week divided by this number that I just made up here, 100. And I just made 100 because it's easier to handle, but the spreadsheet will work if I change. Let's say I will say, let me make this 50. You can see that this number changes, but the um, capacity, weekly capacity, and average revenue stay the same. If I change this to 25, again, these numbers change, but that my capacity and my weekly revenue stay the same.